The first type of NoSQL database that we take a look at in this course is document databases. Uh, in particular, we're going to focus on MongoDB. In a document database, the document is the most basic unit of data. It's similar to what we would call a row in a SQL database. Uh, documents are simply ordered sets of key value pairs. So while we're not taking a look at an actual key value database in this course, uh, it's important to note that document databases do use a key value structure of sorts. Uh, so here's a simple example of one document in a uh, document database where we can see we have a book ID, which is in this case the ISBN for the book, uh, the title of the book, and the author of the book. Uh, so, so far this might look a lot like what we would have for a uh, SQL database where this might be one row. Uh, notice that it's in JavaScript object notation format, or actually in MongoDB it'll be in what's called binary uh, script object notation, BSON, or BSON, rather than JSON. Uh, but the format is very similar, it just allows for some different, uh, uh, different data types that aren't allowed for in JSON. Here are a couple more examples of, of documents that might be in a product catalog database. Uh, notice here though, uh, while it's still very simple, it's got an identification number and it's got a title for the item. Uh, the, the, the rows don't have the same data structures, right? In the first case we have an ISBN, in the second case we have ASIN instead. Uh, so we're not required to have the same schema for each document. Uh, in the first case we have title, the second case we have item. We can also store more complicated documents. Uh, so here's an example of a book with two authors. So we have a book ID, we have the title, and then in, in the, in the uh, key value pair for the author, we have a more complicated object. We have a nested object here. We have two different authors. Uh, so document databases allow for more complex structure than just a simple row. And we'll see examples of that throughout the various tasks that we give you for the course. So document databases are, are structured a little bit differently from SQL databases. In SQL you've got your database and then you've got your tables within the database and then you've got rows within each table. So similarly, in document databases, you have your database, and then you have what we call collections, which are just groupings of documents. Uh, and then you've got, within each collection, you can have any number of documents stored within that collection. Obviously, we like to choose collections that make sense. So one way to do things would be to have a books collections, have a videos collections, you know, have a food products collection. Uh, and to organize things in that manner. But you don't have to do it that way. You could have a web store collection that has all of those different types of items in it, and then you could have a retail store collection, for instance, if you have different of items available in stores and online. So there are a lot of different ways to structure your document database. And that's why we say document databases are fairly unstructured and, and, and schemaless. Uh, document databases can be seen as the next step beyond relational databases in a sense. You can see where the evolution goes from originally storing information in flat files like CSV files or tab separated files uh, to relational databases which have all of those advantages that we've talked about where uh, you only store one piece of information in one place so you don't have to worry about updating it in multiple places for instance. Uh, to document databases, which, uh, which remove some of those advantages of relational databases, uh, but they do so for purposes of availability, for performance, for massive data size, for instance. Uh, and so you can see this as an ev evolution of uh, database storage. Uh, there are still cases where we'll prefer relational databases. So it, it might be a little bit misleading to think about it as the next step and better than relational databases. So it's the next step, but it's an alternative uh, that offers different sets of advantages. Uh, common use cases for document databases, event logging. Right? Every time you log into a website or every, every time a certain process occurs, you log information. So document databases can be very useful for storing those massive amounts of information. Uh, you can use document databases for blogs or for content management systems for websites. It, it makes for very fast uh, and, and very reliable over time access to that information. Uh, we use document databases a lot for web analytics or real-time analytics and for e-commerce applications. Uh, you know, it's, it's very useful to use a document database to store the information for a user's shopping cart. Right? That's a very common use case. 
There are a variety of document databases available. Uh, in this course, again, we're going to focus on the last one here, MongoDB, uh, but there are several others. CouchDB in particular is a pretty popular one. Redis and Apache has another project called Cassandra, uh, are also document databases. So we're going to focus on MongoDB, but there are some other choices, and, and each one offers certain advantages and disadvantages that you can research on your own.